It's day 16, folks. We counted yesterday as day 15. I hope you enjoyed the little video and the reflection from the third Sunday of Advent. Christmas is creeping closer and closer. And today I'd like to share something with you. It's a bit of a meditation on a story tell. And it begins with the verse from Isaiah. Like a shepherd, he will tend his flock and with his arms keep them together. He will carry the lambs in his bosom and lead the ewes to water. I'm going to ask you to imagine that you're hearing the voice of a Palestinian shepherd. He lives high in the mountains overlooking the Jordan Valley in a small Palestinian village. Now for many generations my family have been farming here and caring for our sheep and the olive trees and the almond trees. And we even grow a little cro small crop of wheat now and then and some chickpeas. Subsistence farming, I think you might well call it. But high on the hilltops here, it's a bit isolated. Um, we do balloons and some of the sheep from time to time because we lose them to illness and we lose them to wolves and we lose them to bandits who inhabit our countryside. Now, people down in the town in Bethlehem don't really like us very much. Well, I should say up in the town in Bethlehem because it's a long road up, a long hike up that hill, I can tell you now. I'm trying to walk ahead of those sheep. Well, they'd be driving you crazy. The people in the town, they don't really like us much. They call us shifty. They, they, they think we'd live in one ear and, and rent a house out in the other one. And they don't trust us very much. I don't know why. I think it goes back about 250 years to some time ago when one of my ancestors did something wrong to one of the rabbis and the rabbis did something wrong to one of my ancestors and they've held it against them ever since. I know I'm trustworthy, and I know my friends be trustworthy too. Well, you see, in our in our shepherding, unlike years, the custom is for the shepherds to stay with their flocks all day. And we keep wild dogs away, and we also stay up all night betimes. Now, I lived in that village for a many, many a year. I was well into my seventh decade, which in, in them days now, that was a fair innings. I was watching a mate of mine, a man by the name of Jacob, and he was leading his flock along a limestone edge, high as he dare in the hillside. And as he moved through the scrub, I noticed that he was singing one of those old songs from way back when, you know, um, the young Bethlehem lad, shepherd made good. Uh, what was his name? There? Oh, David. Yeah, David, uh, uh, who became a king after. Uh, he was a bit of a naughty boy, but, but that's a story for another time now. That's a story for another time. That batch of a woman. Yeah, flaunting herself on top of a rooftop. Now, no better than she ought to be, really. But that's a story for another time. Well, there was my friend Jacob and he was, he was wandering along and he was singing. And he was singing Psalm 23. Now, we all know that one, don't we? The Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. I remember thinking to myself now with the Romans occupying the land and the taxes going up and the price of sheep being what they are, uh, God's keeping his promise would have been a fine, fine thing round about now. Little did I know that within 24 hours, all our lives were to change. That was a real cold, miserable, frosty night, that was. We were huddled in the caves at the bottom of Beit Sahor. Up in the town, well, it was heaving. That Roman emperor decided that he was going to count all of us. Well, counting sheep on a hillside would be easier than that. Anyway, the world of wife and the seven snotty orphans were all gathered in Bethlehem and we were rather glad we weren't up there, let me tell you. There wasn't even squeezing in room to be had. Well, we were sitting there, middle of the night, minding our own businesses, keeping an eye out for them wolves. 
when all of a sudden there was a mahoose of bright light shining down on us. Well, we couldn't believe our eyes. In front of us were the most beautiful creatures we've ever seen in our lives. Bright, shining. It wasn't so much that they were shining white, but they were shining like the heat of a noon day in the middle of the desert. You know, when it hurts your eyes so much to even look and you have to put your covering over the eyes for fear of losing your sight. And the smell, the smell I can't begin to describe. It was like all the perfumes of the world in one and fresh baked bread and all the smells of your childhood that bring you straight back to your mammy's arms. And then there was the sound, I'll never forget it. It was like, it was like, like, like sunshine dancing on the top of icy water. And you know the sound that the water makes coming down out of the rocks from a waterfall? Well, I tell you, I, I'm getting goosebumps as I'm even thinking of it now. And one of them creatures spoke to us and said, Tonight I bring good news, glad tidings. What to us, I thought. Us mangy lot of shepherds sitting here with the stinky sheep on the hillside. I bring you good news and glad tidings, for tonight in Bethlehem your Saviour is born. God is with you, Emmanuel. Now get yourselves up that hill and go find the house where the star rests above it, and there you'll find the baby laid in the manger in his mammy's arms, and you can go and worship. Well, he didn't quite say it like that, but you get me drift. Well, off we took like the clappers. Off we took, and sure enough, we knelt down and we looked into the baby's eyes. And sure, it was like looking back through all the ages, ages and ages and ages. And we just knew, you see, we just knew. The Lord's me shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His comfort I yearn to know. And right there and then I decided I'd put me trust in him and I'd follow him. And it didn't matter where he went, where that babby went, I went to. Even if I never left me hillside. Even if I never went so far as Jerusalem, I would follow that babby all my life. Okay.